and welcome to Off the Court with me, Caroline Barker, and her, Tams in Greenway. How are we, Mr. Greenway? I'm happy. The sun is back out. So what is there to complain about, hey? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We have a cracker of a show coming up for you. Right at the end of it, we've got something special that you can get involved in and get yourself on the telly. Watch out for that. Hashtag Off the Court, which is what you've been using throughout the week to get your questions in for our superstar Yes, she's been voted the world's best netballer, a career that's seen her make her England debut at 16. Her under-17 debut was at just 14, showing that England players could mix it with the best in the world. She moved to Australia and she conquered it. Tick, done. She is the world's best keeper, voted by everyone. She's been voted the world's best player by us as well. Who am I talking about? She speaks for herself. Well, at least her record does. She's got a Commonwealth Games gold medal hanging around her neck, although she does have slightly dodgy taste in music. But when it comes to netball, she's just it. This is the one with Jeeva Mentor. Jeeva Mentor's here. I mean, I did the whole explanation. I don't know why I do that every week, because clearly at the start of the show, it says with Jeeva Mentor or whoever it might be. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I know. Sorry, I've got the beanie on and the jumper, but it is actually winter in Melbourne at the moment. I see you guys rocking the t-shirts. Um, we have got we have got sunshine, but it's definitely not warm. And I'm definitely okay. I'm keeping well in ISO time. What have you been up to? How have you been occupying yourself? Yeah, the first couple of weeks were definitely probably a bit of a struggle, just getting used to that routine of what to do. And um, for me, I live right by Albert Park Lake in Melbourne. Um, so each morning I used to get myself up and just basically run around the lake. And those who know me well, I prefer more the weights room rather than any cardio. So to do that was probably not only a physical challenge, but probably a mental one for me to start with. But I think as the weeks have kind of rolled on, I've got into a good routine of a um, bit of exercise. I'm still doing my uni, which is all online. So not much has changed there. I've Sign myself up to a few online courses, one in finance, um, and then also one to do with my level three coaching accreditation in netball. So I feel like I'm keeping pretty busy and I've had so many Zoom calls with all sorts of different people. It's been quite wonderful, really. Business, finance, everything else besides. I mean, is there anything you can't do, Jeeva Mentor? <laughs> yeah, she can't, run, she can't run around a lake. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it may not be quick, but I can make it round. Does this mean that you're, you're ready to come back if, if it was announced tomorrow that it would be back oh. you'd be ready i'm very thankful that particularly with the suncourt super netball they said that they'll allow a month before a uh, month notice for us so i definitely will take that month i feel like i'm fit enough but i don't feel like my ball skills are probably anywhere near ready but um yeah it's like luckily we'll get a bit of notice but if we have to come back tomorrow then i don't know what sort of standard the league's going to be in and i think that's probably across the board if you've seen a lot of the girls have been doing challenges over the last couple of weeks so we can juggle we can skip we can <laughs> sing we can dance we can tick tock but play netball i'm not sure how good we'll be at that if we had to play tomorrow not too subtle hint from tamsin uh, with the roses that she's currently wearing uh, about england clearly <laughs> maybe you don't well, want them where they are the positioning of those roses yeah, either that's not that's <laughs> not um but uh, when do you want to see a rose back on your dress and would you like tamsin <laughs> to design it <laughs> yes please on that on that note um <laughs> Obviously, it'd be lovely. I mean, I factored in being able to sort of come back into the English setup after Suncorp this year, and that would be looking at um, internationals through sort of October onwards. Um, what that looks like now in terms of restrictions with travel, I think that's probably going to play a, a big part. And first of all, let's get domestic netball back on and then and see where the calendar fits. And I think it's taking a lot of communication between the major countries in terms of how we're going to be able to factor in um, what's, what's scheduled with broadcasts, what we need to do to tick off with... Um, with International Netball Federation in terms of what they need to, to see netball-wise. But hopefully we'll be able to get something this year. I don't think it will look too promising in terms of internationals. I think we'll be realistic in the fact to think that hopefully the beginning of next year we'll be able to, to get back, for me personally, in that England dress. And in, in an ideal world, if it all does go to plan, you've said you, you're planning to come back. Is it a year-by-year -year thing now or will you commit to a four-year programme? Because I know usually we get into it and go, oh God, four years, that looks like a hell of a long time. Um, is that something you're thinking about or is it just literally season by season? I think for me, um, age is just a number and I feel like I'm in sort of some of the best shape I have been for a while. I'm still loving what I'm doing and that's a, a big impact in what, what decision I make. And so for me, it's not necessarily year by year. It's just as long as I'm still performing and still contributing to a team, I'll still keep putting my hand up. And 
and making sure that I have that impact, um, hopefully in the international stage. So yeah, I'd love to be involved. Um, I'd love to continue playing on through. I'd love to potentially see a, a six Commonwealth Games and a sixth World Cup under my belt if I'm still of some use. So um, yeah, at the moment, it's just keep myself as fit as healthy as possible and, and hopefully my netball can still do the talking. Have you had that conversation with Jess? I know you'll all bump into or have played with or have been with Jess previously, but have you had that conversation with her as, as England coach? Yeah, it's probably one of those things that um, the whole English setup, it's fairly good in terms of they talk to you one on one and what your aspirations are and where you see yourself going. And I think the important thing with netball is our calendars come out so far in advance that we need to be able to commit to different programs. So they need to know what our, I guess, what our decisions are going to be. And so I've had that conversation with Jess, which has been nice. Now she's in that sort of head coach role. Obviously, I missed her first uh, test series at the beginning of the year. But um, yeah, so it's great to be able to talk to her and our PD, uh, Sarah Simington as well, and just sort of figure out where I'm sitting with things. Um, and I think that's the beauty with it, particularly with players based over in Australia, um, is that we have that communication open so we can work in what's happening here and also back into the English setup. I'm going to guess when you had that conversation with Jess, she did cartwheels around the room, do you? <laughs> I love when you go, oh, we'll just see where I sit sit on this <laughs> guess you sit top of the list love just just gonna throw that out there she she will be very happy <laughs> well, we got all these youngsters coming through i don't know half their names so i want to get back in the setup so I at least know who i'm going to be playing with and talking to and i'm excited about that as well do you work, walk in the first day in the dressing room and go you know i've got a statue right <laughs> can you imagine i'd be told to turn around and walk right back out again <laughs> yeah well, whilst bringing the book in yeah the background. <laughs> That's a light reading for you all. <laughs> We've also got someone else who's going to join us in the room shortly. Perfect timing, as always, from Sonia McClomer. We'll see her pop up in just a minute. Both of you have played with Sonia, so do you want to get any trash talk out of the way now before she actually joins us? Oh, oh there she is. Yeah. You can't trash talk her anymore. <laughs> as Sonia connects to the audio before she can actually say anything to you, as Sonia McClomer joining us then on Off the Court. Hello, Sonia. Hi everybody, how are you? I'm glad that you've dressed up, but you're the odd one out because you haven't put Jeeva's book behind you. Uh, come on now. <laughs> have, you even got, have you even bought my book and contributed? I just, I kind of thought that as such a best close friend, <laughs> I'm going to the one in the post. And then I'm assuming because I moved from Sydney to Go Coast that it got lost in the post. Oh, I'll have a word with the postie over here. <laughs> she knows everyone don't you know we were just mentioning her statue so there's nothing she can't do uh, Sonia thank you for coming on off the court now clearly all three of you have a closer connection than I'll ever have with you although I have wiped your sweat off the court a couple of times so at least I can say that but the last time you were all playing together was that the 2015 World Cup Sonia yeah it was oh great memories I yeah, miss you. Was, I was looking now, Dan. I miss you lot. Well, that was a good match. That was a bronze medal playoff match, wasn't it? I mean, that was an interesting World Cup, um, but it was it was a fitting end, I think, getting that bronze medal. I think we absolutely smashed it in the end, didn't we? It was a great game, and so we went on to win and get a bronze medal, which you know we wanted to be in a final, I think, um, but it was probably a few years too early. Just to pretend like I was there, I was there, but I was watching from the stands. Um, Jeeva, there seemed to be something that changed in that bronze medal match all of you huddling together and it seems to be the players that really dictated what what happened it was clearly difficult in the build up to that for the, for those that don't know tracy neville's father passed away heading to australia for that bronze medal was it the first time that you all kind of really came together as a team and said right we're going to we're going to do this for each other we're going to do it for for the team yeah it was a, a really tricky and we and there was definitely a lot of emotion throughout that world cup um mm -hmm. and i know it's a team sport at the end of the day and i know sonia is actually on this call but all credit to Sonia. She actually came on and provided that energy and that gel for us in that game, which we've kind of been sorting and looking for throughout as we'd sort of been trying to find and gather our emotions throughout the whole week with what we had gone through off the court as well. And I think that, that, that final game for us, literally Sonia came on and was the glue and her energy that she brought lifted all of us on the court and, there definitely was something that we pulled on and it probably untapped that sort of connection that we had then, which we then managed to use um, sort of three, four years later in the Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast. We've had loads of questions come through and Sonia, you'll be involved in part of these too because the overriding question looks to the future, right? So before we get there as to who could possibly fill both of your shoes, Tamsin is going to embarrass you both and analyse both of you. So, uh, here we go. Yeah, well done, Tamsin. We're just going to sit back. Go on, then. Oh, Pretend they're not here. 
Well, I actually picked out some clips from the um, 2015, that, that bronze medal playoff, and, and especially that second quarter, because I think it was a game changer. And uh, it's just the way you complement each other. So Sonia's range to Jeeva's movement. Um, I think you were playing against Janice Beckford, Sonia, so the arm range in her made such a difference about what Jeeva could do with her movement behind then. So, you know, your trademarks, Jeeva, when you roll behind, your backing up is absolutely incredible as well. Um, and it was just the way you partnered, partnered. but also, what I think is quite unique about this is, Son, you, you will always go tight. I used to hate playing against you because you're passing the hell. I've got pictures of you holding my dress and up on me and arms all over. But what I love, yeah, you know it. But what I love is you come into the circle. <laughs> when you two come into the circle, you're still able to switch. And that's really unique because usually a man on will stay man on. And I think that's where the Aussies are suffering at the moment and there's a defensive unit. But you two had that beauty of being able to do your jobs effectively one-on-one -on -one, but when you came in together that switch was perfect and I, I think people underestimate how big that range was when you were both in the circle it was such a pain in the neck to try and get ball through so we've analyzed a bit about why you two were so strong together Sonia what do you think makes that that great partnership and you can now embarrass Jeeva what is it that, that she does that allows you to play um I think obviously it's about time. Like me and Jeeva were lucky that we played nearly over, over 10 years together in the circle. So growing up when Jeeva first came into the England fold and that partnership had time to develop. Um, Jeeva did spend a lot of time like I did as well on the bench watching and observing, which I think is so important in the game. It just kind of watching, and understanding who you're going to be playing with. Um, and it's about communication. Jeeva just responded like we both had this this reaction whereas if I called Jeeva left I knew she was going to go left so that trust was was there and it, obviously it builds over time but I think that combination of you know the communication um the trust and obviously the friendship on and off the court I just think that just helped us glue together as a, I guess a formidable formidable force Jeeva, did, did you have a preference on, <laughs> this is really awkward, uh, but did you have a preference on, on who you, you played with and, and what style you, you suit better? It's probably one thing I've never really spoken about and I've never really shared with Sons is that coming into the fold at a young position, Sonia was goalkeeper at the time, so I came in and I watched what she did out on court. I sat from the bench and I bided my time and then when I got on court, I sort of pushed her out to goal defence and I play goalkeeper and I think it can go one way or the other you can either respect that player and embrace them and nurture them and bring them up through which is exactly what Sonia did or you could see it as a threat and not share anything with them and, um, and make it about a competition to, to get positions on court and don't get me wrong you are all fighting for that position on court but I think the way that Sonia um, the, the respect that she gave me and nurtured me as I came on through has kind of set up our defence throughout England all the way through that it's about no matter who's on court we're all trying to share the knowledge that we've got we're all trying to bring each other up through and we want to be the best defensive unit out there and encourage our team to be the best team possible out on court and I think that's really stemmed from um, what I got from Sonia all the way through and that's what I've tried to impair on, on other defenders coming up through and and hopefully that's able to continue through the generations of what we set up in England. Uh, you're too smooth because that's where we're going next. Uh, of those many questions, people that got in touch using the hashtag off the court, Lucy Goodman says, which defenders are you particularly keen on seeing step up for the Roses over the upcoming months or years? I'm going to give you some time to think about it, both of you, because Sonia, clearly you're now part of the, the England setup. We've seen you coaching brilliantly as well and being part of that setup with Jess. But Tamsin, mm. we've had a little bit of the hard work done for us because uh, Draft Central this week also put this question out and they come up with three players yeah. Summer Artman, Razio Kwashi, and Kate Shimin. And you're going to have yes. a look at all three. Yeah, so we're going to take a look at some clips. We're going to start with Summer. Now, Summer's probably got the biggest range. She's probably the tallest in there, the one with the most presence. And what I've been really impressed when you look at these clips is how she's worked on her footwork. So her rolling in behind players. Clearly, uh, her jump on the shot, she puts up Ella Clark on this. Um, her rebounding position, how she's getting around and getting in front and getting a go at the ball, really impressive. I guess the only thing that concerns me about Summer is that backing up. Um, you know, Jeeva is so lethal at that. Summer's definitely got the height for it. Now she's worked on her footwork to get around the player. It's whether we can get her going for the back and ups as well. Then you've got Kate Shimon. I, I probably would have put Stacey Francis in at the goalkeeper rather than Kate. I think she's trying to play goal defence a little bit more. However, uh, she's probably what I'd call a more urgent player coming across from Australia. So she'll stick on the body a lot tighter, goes a lot more man on man. Um, again, her range is quite deceptive. So she can come round the ball. You can see that from the clip, clip she gets. 
I guess her probably weakness for me is that when she's isolated one-on-one -on -one as a goalkeeper, you can definitely see that from the movement. There's a lot more movement going on in attacking circles now, so something to be wary of. I guess the exciting player for me is Raz Quashi at the minute. Perhaps hasn't got the height of um, Summer Artman. However, she's got the... Um, the athletic ability, her on to come off. You're going to see her tracking some players here. She, her footwork is superb to get around and she's not afraid to go to the, to the back and up. The height probably lets her down a little bit, but I think if she can work on a position in the last clip, you're going to see her stepping off to play back to, to the goal shooter and, and the ability to go up is incredible. I think she's got the best read of the game. All three offer totally different options. For me, and Jeeva touched on it and Sonia touched on it, it's the partnerships. You know, I, I think we've seen if Raz Quashi has got a tight man-on-man -man out the front, she's not as effective as when she's got a slightly looser player. So I think what Jess is going to have to start to work out is, you know, when you haven't got the presence of someone like Jeeva, what are the best partnerships that work below that? Sonia, is that pretty much how you're reading it at the moment at England? Yeah, definitely. I just, I think I agree with what Tandon's saying. I think the partnerships are not there yet. I think they've all come in um, at different stages. Like you said, Kate's coming in across from overseas. So playing that tight one-on-one -on -one Australia game with that, that stay on your man focus. Um, Raz, lovely elevation. I just think lacks experience. And I think that comes with getting more court play. Again, summer, not really in the fold as much. I think the last couple of test series, you know, the reality is, She's got a great range, great height. The backing up is needed in a game, especially when we're going and we're heading towards a competition where the shooters are six foot four. So you need that jump and that elevation. Mm. So I just think it is about the combinations. You know, they've not spoke much about Stacey Francis coming back in, who I just think is exciting and, you know, trying to find a combination when the likes of Ajiva and Ebony are not around, who do we, where do you place Stacey Francis? And I think that's been a struggle, which I noticed whether she's at the front or the back. So I think it is about time. It's about combinations growing. And it'll be interesting to see because there's so many other young girls coming through as well. Jeeva, they've all done the working out for you. Oh. <laughs> uh, your word is final. Yes, um, it's quite interesting. Sonia and I have many a chat about it as our defensive duo. And obviously you've got Jodie, um, Jodie Gibson coming back into the fold and also Layla coming back in, which... Um, obviously had the beauty to play with her and Stacey and Jodie and I've not seen the other three, I've seen them play but I've not actually been, had the opportunity to play with them and I think the important thing that I have with the other three that I've played with is that, that adaptability they have to be able to try out different combinations and obviously we've all touched on that and that connection that you have is so important. Um, you can have the athleticism but you need to have that connection and ability to be able to adapt to the people around you. Um, so I'm excited to see what it would be like bringing back the likes of Layla and Stacey and, and hopefully myself back in the mix and hopefully we're able to impart a lot of that knowledge on those young three that you've just mentioned coming up through. All right, we will talk future in just a moment, but uh, a couple of quick fire ones for you. Essex Bex, and I think I know where she wants you to go. If you were to return to England, which Super League club would you play for? Oh, so I started in Team Bar. Um, Sonia and I actually played for Surrey Storm. For me, you know what? It actually depends who the coach is and who the players are around me. It's all about, it's got to be fun. I've got to enjoy what I'm doing, so I want to enjoy it with those people. Eva, I can highly recommend wasps. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> of course you can. <laughs> and if you hang around for a while, I'm pretty sure Mentor has got a bit of a Scottish twang to it. I don't know. <laughs> So obvious, so obvious as she sits there with her roses, uh, so to speak. Vicky says, every athlete has good days, bad days. How do you pick yourself up mentally when you think you, you haven't played well or the result is disappointing? Yeah, you can't get away from this. Um, I think the biggest thing is distractions immediately. So for me, it would be if it's early a game in the day, then making sure I sort of take myself away and um, go for a cycle ride, go to a batting cage, go out for dinner, just distract myself and then make sure I have a good night's sleep. And then the next day, get down to analysing what I wasn't happy with, what went wrong, and then being able to talk to someone. So that connection that you have with your coach is so important. So I think there's different stages and steps to that. And they're probably the big things I rely on. And Roxanne, and you can answer this one too, Sonia. Uh, although this one on Jeeva, first off, you're the best goal. And I'm not saying you weren't, Sonia, but this one specifically <laughs> says, <laughs> whoops, okay, uh, Jeeva, you're the best goalkeeper in the world, but who is the hardest goal shooter to play against, past or present? Oh, oh, Sonia would be the same. We get this all the time. And I think it really depends. Um, it depends on the team that you're playing with. Um, so probably in my early years, it was probably someone like Sherelle McMahon, just because she was obviously a very crafty, dynamic goal attack, but then put her back at a shooter and she used to give goalkeepers all sorts of headaches. 
then there's coming up against Kat to IT, who I just thought her footwork and handwork were incredible and just left us guessing half the time. And then at the moment, one-on-one, -on -one, height is very hard to beat. So coming up against someone like Janelle Fowler is, is obviously extremely hard. Sonia? Good answer. Um, yeah, I would agree definitely with Cheryl McMahon. I think she was formidable and she was the speed, her timing, and she can nail the shot. And she wasn't even that tall. So she was always a tough one, I think, for me. Um, you can't, you know, you can't deny Maria Tolau. Um, she had the height, which you don't really get in a goal attack, but then the skill and the execution of the shot was so hard to combat. But you can't deny Irene Van Dyke, you know, a legend of the game. Mm stop a ball on that shot and especially under the post. Let's quickly t a look to the future then, Jeeva. It was asked briefly in there if you would come back to England. Do you ever see that happening? Oh, um, it's a tricky one. Um, I probably, it'd be a, a decision I'd make a lot easier if the um, leagues and the seasons didn't collide. I think that would probably put that more on the table um, at the moment. But why I still want to be improving my netball um, and challenging those best in the world. I feel that unfortunately Suncourt Super Netball is the best league in the world at the moment and, and that's going to be my first choice. But if the seasons um, did split and I, there was opportunity to be able to come back and play in, in England, I definitely would. I know there's obviously the Fast Five brings a lot of players back over to have a sample of the English style of netball again. And so that would probably bring me back. So who who knows? I will never say never, um, but at the moment, I'm definitely my roots are here in Australia. Uh, you're all going to hang on, aren't you, for the Olympics? Because there's talk about Fast <laughs> Five being in the Olympics. That is so going to happen at some stage. We've both got the book behind us, Leap, which has done phenomenally well. And there's a lot of soul searching in the book too, difficult times that you went through. Tamsin and I have had this conversation. I wonder if all three of you had this conversation before about when you think is the right time to become a mother or to look at becoming a mother and you've spoken quite openly about freezing your eggs and where's your thinking at the moment and, and where does that sit on on your whole playing career? Yeah I think first and foremost with the book um, Leap it's obviously a leap of faith in a lot of things not just leaping around on court and for me it wasn't just a personal achievement it's about trying to put netball on the map and getting it out there and getting people talking about it more and getting to know us as not just netballers but people too and and hopefully mothers down the line. And um, for me at the moment, I'm still single, young, free and single. So um, at, at the moment, netball takes the forefront in that. And obviously age does come into factor. And I say age is just a number, but when it comes to fertility, it's a realistic um, decision that you've got to be able to take into account. And for me, freezing my eggs, so I have sort of some young, healthy eggs when I eventually have the opportunity to um, to start a family is, is something that, I want, that I've will hopefully pursue but for now it needs to be a bigger talking point I mean both Sonia and I are in our 30s and we started talking about it it's probably something that we wish that we'd done in our 20s and and there's probably not so much of a taboo and something that is spoken about um, quite open and honestly. Do you guys like I, we were talking about this before you guys came on air and and I said I think it's it's changed because I think back to when we were in the squad and we were all like what 18 to 20 whatever when we first got in I don't think any bus trip or tour there was ever chat of oh my god one day do you want to have kids you know we never had those kind of conversations and yet we all kind of figured we'd I'm guessing we'd just play out our careers get married and have babies and the reality is if you look at our generation that didn't really happen and it's a conversation I've started to have with some of the sort of senior players that I've begun to work with and gone you know, have you even been checked out? Have you, you, you gone and had a look? Because it, it's all right just saying I want to stop and go. And Sonia, I, I, you know, I don't know where you're at with this, but it, we never had those chats, did we? Like, is it something now from a coaching point of view that you'd be really keen to talk to players about? And, and now looking in your squads, looking at players coming through going, you can't just forget about this. Yeah, um, I think it's exactly what you said. Coming, growing up, 20s, even mid to start of early 30s, didn't think about it, just kept playing, enjoying life, never thought that it would be a problem, never even discussed kids, you know, and like, I've turned 40 now, and I've had, you know, been open, I've had um, nearly five, six miscarriages, whether that's been going through the IVF, going through natural um, birth, so the last, I think the last four years have been like this roller coaster ride of emotions. Um, I think for me, like looking back, like I've told everybody now, I'm just like to all my friends in their face, I'm like, freeze your eggs, yeah. um, start thinking about fertility because I wasn't told that. So for me, it was, I was just enjoying my life. I was playing netball, which I loved. I started coaching, you know, so I was in a good space. And then, you know, I was like, oh, okay, fertility, kids, family. And, you know, I never thought it would be a struggle because, you know, you always think it's, that happens to someone else. 
Yeah. So I just think like the last four years for me has been a massive growing point. And I just think it's about talking to each other. And I think we don't do that enough as women in sport and especially netball, especially English netballers. So I'm all for freeze your eggs and, you know, start thinking, you know, start preparing for what tomorrow might bring. We're going to have this massive baby boom now. It's fine. Yeah. We're the oldest group of mothers in the world. But we'll yeah, have... Not during lockdown, Tamsin. Not during lockdown, eh? <laughs> Guys, just think of the netball team we'll have. Thank you both so much. Sonia, thank you for, for sharing that as well. And Jeeva too. I guess that the bright, the bright point to all of this is you're now involved coaching, Sonia. Jeeva, you too, what you'll go on to do. And you, Tamsin, coaching as well. These open conversations are happening because you've all been through it are going through it and that's that's the important thing yeah. sonia mcclaimer thank you for coming on jiva mental take that hat off it's positively summer it's where the you are. one Stop boasting about that weather. Yeah. Yeah. You take yeah. the girl out of bournemouth you can't take bournemouth out of the girl <laughs> right they are there's an exclusive when bournemouth or a super league club will have her back playing right done <laughs> Jeeva, I am not far from Bournemouth now. I mean, that is doable. I've set up two franchises. I can do a third. I've got okay, that. I'm on for that. I'm on for that. Jeeva, Sonia, thank you very much. You could stay on and watch us embarrass you further, but I won't allow it. I'm going to hang up on you both now. So wave goodbye and thank you for coming on the show. And this is Off the Court, the Jeeva Mentor Special. It was special, actually, in having Sonia on, Tamsin. I know all three of you, you've shared a little bit of everything together, but for them to be so open is, it's not about being refreshing. It's actually about saying, it's all right to talk about it. Yeah, and I, and I think Sonia, well, she summed it up perfectly, didn't she? That communication and, and talking to players now and understanding and, and what they've both been through and um, how amazing for her to talk so openly about that. That's what makes them great role models what about back on the court then your drill this week is all about jiva yeah so i tried to take on shani i'm now trying to take on jiva i mean i'm absolutely mental um yes the drill is jiva mental good luck <laughs> okay so this week it's jiva um, i'm not going to focus on her one-on-one -on -one game her back and up her coming around she's absolutely amazing however i think this is one of the underrated parts of her game the reading of the game, how she comes off her player. When she was playing for Lightning, it was incredible the way that defensive unit was set up for her. This is what makes her the very best. Other great players doing this at the minute, Jane Watson in England, Fran Williams, Raz Quashi. Absolutely amazing at seeing what else is going on. So, got my help here today. Little Casey is my big shooter. And of course, Jamie Jean. Okay, so I've marked out the four cones, which is the shooting circle. You're going to be practicing being on the shooter. And as the ball gets released, boom, you're coming out to win that ball. You try your different positions, boom, and you're coming on. They might get quite hard, we might be in this position. Yeah, and you come through, and it's a real dynamic drive to come onto the ball. That's the first practice. Then we're going to add this actual vision and the timing of it. As the player comes in, if I come off too soon, they're not going to throw it. But when they throw it, and how you move to come to the ball, go back on what? So I might start in a different position. I start behind, I'm marking the shooter. I come around, oh, I'm not going for that one, go again. Go to the big one in the corner. Ready? So it's there, I see it, I see it, I read it. Bump. And I come through. And this final one is all about the timing. So now you get them moving around. So go, to the three. go to the three, go to the three. So I don't go for that one, I wait. I reposition, I see what she's gonna do. And I come through. So important, you not only practice the movement of it, but then try to get the timing. Hopefully, you'll have some great helpers like helpers like I do. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. <laughs> Tamsin's drill for this week. Uh, if there's a player you'd like to, I was going to say Tamsin to take apart. I mean, it's just about showing your love for these players in this style on court. Get in touch, use hashtag off the court. On to your social next. It wouldn't be a week without Adine Thomas and her various TikToks. Uh, this week, she's totally, I think, destroying is what she said, push ups. Um, do you fancy doing a bit of this, Tamsin? Whoa, I'm still push ups on my knees. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got that in my locker. No? Uh, plenty using Zoom and getting in touch. This is a great one from Mac Netball. They've been putting the, the names up of various players and then on the back, so the girls, the team, pick one of those players from the board and on the back of it is a, a different exercise for them to complete in honour of their player. Brilliant. Yeah, I was doing, I think mine was uh, against the wall and re rebounding, interesting enough. But uh, yes, it was, it was amazing. I thought that was so creative. 
not that I'm competitive, but where am I? I mean, I think if you look at my record at Mild May Junior School, it was one to behold. Now, we were wondering how this season might be decided. Uh, sorry, Storm put this up from 2040, so they've been into the future. What happened to the Super League during the coronavirus pandemic? And this is Karen Bailey pinching the trophy. So do we think they get it? Uh, you never know. 2040, a lot can happen. Yeah, <laughs> by then. And now, you've been involved in this challenge. Tell us about the 2.6 or the 26 challenge. Yeah, it was amazing, wasn't it? I think all the charities are struggling. Um, it was a London marathon, um, you know, didn't go ahead. And so, so many charities are relying on on sort of the events that go on ar around the country at this time. So uh, the 2.6 challenge was get involved, do anything you can. Um, I was lobbing balls into bins from distance. This one went around the 20, 26 squats. So many of the Super League coaches getting their kids on the back of Mel Mansfield doing it. I think Camilla Buchanan was <laughs> involved as well. Um, yeah, I, I haven't tried this one yet, but you, you never know. I think a Casey, a Jamie, and maybe I'll even go out there and go Joe as well. I, I was about to say, who's your third in that? Joe. You're yeah. not doing a squat with Joe on your back. I don't tell him, but he's only little. He's, you know, he says six foot. Um... Oh, can he do it at that pace? <laughs> <laughs> good abs. Uh, good um, pelvic floor control as well then, shown from Camilla. She's still got it. Still got it, clearly. Uh, that's almost it from us this week. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, get outside, get in the sunshine, get practicing your netball. I mean, there was something else we were supposed to add, but it's all right. Can you remember what it was? Good job I can. That's why you're here, Barker. <laughs> yeah, uh, sometimes I have my uses. Next Wednesday, it's not just us, right? There's a third wheel incoming. Yes. Di's going to be here. The team are back together, but not actually here. The netball show is going to be on proper sky. I'm not saying we're not proper, but you know, this does feel a little bit like it's out of school, right? Proper sky next Wednesday. So Wednesday, the 13th of May at two o'clock in the afternoon, there'll be a netball show, which is all of us, loads of guests, some big exclusives as well. And Di is marshalling it all, so we'll be much better behaved. But we've got a little treat for you. If you are at home right now with your netball post, or if you've got some old footage on your phone of you playing netball, Tamsin and I, we're going to commentate over it. So if you can, send us, use a hashtag off the court, any netball clips of you playing that you've got, and we will put some commentary on it. We won't analyse it. She won't do her normal nasty stuff, you know, where she's saying, whoa, the foot is out there. Oh, whoa, 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 no, what no, are no. you doing? <laughs> <laughs> None of that. I mean, I'll probably do that because I don't know what I'm doing. But we will commentate on it and we'll put it out on the show as well. So Wednesday, next Wednesday, watch it. Before that, your homework, use the hashtag off the court, put your netball clips up there and we will commentate on them and hopefully show them on Wednesday's show. Thank you for everyone that got in touch with questions for Jeeva. Thank you to Jeeva, to Sonia, and most of all, thank you to Tamsin Greenway, as always. What a t-shirt. We're back next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. Sky Sports. Feel it all.